So on Sunday, March 15th, there will be a one-on-one -on -one debate between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden because this is now a two-person race. One of them will win and the other will lose. And now that Joe Biden has no one else to hide behind at these debates, well, I think that his team knows that this could be a disaster. Like we saw how disastrous one debate was for Mike Bloomberg and also knowing just how volatile this race is. I mean, we've seen momentum shift time and again. This could hurt Joe Biden. It could be a fatal blow to his campaign, even if currently he does have all the momentum, even if he is the front runner, because we've seen Bernie Sanders at one point go from being unstoppable to being someone who is no longer the front runner. We've seen Joe Biden on the cusp of death where he came in, what, fourth or fifth in early states and there was talk of him dropping out if he didn't win South Carolina, and that all changed. So the race isn't over. It's still dynamic, right? No matter what happens on Mini Super Tuesday, it's not over. And in the event Joe Biden has a terrible debate against Bernie Sanders, he could still have all the momentum reversed if voters see that he's not going to be competent enough to take on Donald Trump. So up until this point, his campaign has been pretty strategic and rightfully so in trying to hide him away from the public. So voters don't see how much of a gaffe machine and a disaster, quite frankly, he really is. So anticipating the potential, you know, uh, scenario where Bernie Sanders pummels Joe Biden, um, they're changing the format. The DNC and CNN are changing the format to accommodate Joe Biden because of what will likely be a very terrible performance. Look, Bernie Sanders is a very nice person, but even if Bernie Sanders is polite, just having Joe Biden talk for 50% of the time at a two-hour debate would be a nightmare situation because voters are going to see, oh, that's not the Joe Biden I remember. You know, I, I've seen him at these debates and he talks once in a while, and he seems okay, but hearing him speak for an extended period of time, that has me kind of reassessing who can be the person to take on Donald Trump and actually win. Maybe it's Bernie Sanders after all. So, you know, they changed the format because they don't want to hurt Joe Biden. So what are they doing? They're doing a more informal question-answer town hall type format in order to make sure that Joe Biden is protected. Man, they are brazen. So as Holly Otterbein and Mark Caputo of Politico report, quote, why does Joe Biden not want to stand toe to toe with Senator Sanders on the debate stage March 15th and have an opportunity to defend his record and articulate his vision for the future? Asked Jeff Weaver, Sanders senior advisor. Biden's campaign and the DNC said the format for the debate was decided by the party and CNN. The news network declined to comment and referred questions to the DNC. Quote, we will participate in whatever debate CNN chooses to stage. Stand Standing, sitting at podiums or in a town hall, Biden's deputy field manager, Kate Bedingfield, said, quote, the problem for the Sanders campaign is not the staging of the debate, but rather the weakness of Senator Sanders record and ideas. Not really, but OK. The Sanders campaign's accusations unfold just as his supporters and some Republicans have stepped up their criticisms of the 77 year old Biden's physical fitness and mental acuity after lapses on the campaign trail and multiple poor debate performances. For his part, the 78 eight-year-old Sanders has weathered questions about his health ever since suffering a heart attack late last year, including from some of Biden's backers. Weaver said he's not questioning Biden's health, and Biden's campaign said the same about Sanders, but sought to portray him as too inflexible. Quote, we want to have an exchange of ideas next week in Phoenix. We look forward to taking voter questions in a town hall style setting, said Bettingfield. It is odd to see a campaign that says it is based on revolution arguing for the status quo because this is how every other debate has gone. That's a stupid argument. Why is Senator Sanders opposed to a little change? The new format would be a town hall style production featuring audience questions, but in a more intimate setting with the candidates in chairs behind desks, similar to the way Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton were seated in a few 2008 debates. So it's funny because Joe Biden's team is outright denying that this change was made at the behest of Joe Biden, but it was the DNC who is very clearly in the tank for Joe Biden. Tom Perez came from that administration and CNN. They both hate Bernie Sanders. Do you think that this was just a coincidence? Do you think it was a coincidence that the DNC chose to limit the number of debates back in 2015 and 2016? No, all of these things are done for a reason.
And that reason is to protect the status quo. And that's Joe Biden. They know that Joe Biden, even if Bernie Sanders was very, very nice to him, which he probably would be, would still trip and fall over himself and look like an incompetent clown on a debate stage that lasts two or three hours. So they're trying to make it seem a little bit better for Biden by having the audience ask questions, take time away from Biden so he doesn't have to speak the whole time. This is shameless. This is brazen. And this is done to protect Joe Biden. We don't have to speculate about their you know, intentions because it's been clear from day one. They want to stop Bernie Sanders at all costs. And this is part of that effort. This is part of that effort. So, you know, the arguments that they're using, Kate Bedingfield is saying, oh, well, I thought you want a revolution, so you can't handle a town hall setting. This bluffing is embarrassing because it's just bluffing. Like, it's obvious that you're talking smack because you're trying to hide away your candidate. It, look, if, if this is the case and you're truly confident in Joe Biden's ability to speak, then why don't you have him do a one hour press conference? Why don't you have him speak at a rally for more than seven minutes? Why don't you have him do more events? See, you won't do that because you've got the right strategy. You know that you've got to hide Biden away from the public because if, you know, Americans see him for what he really is, an incompetent individual, he might lose. It doesn't matter how much momentum you have. This is an election about electability. You guys are the ones who made it this way. The media, the Democratic Party establishment. So they realize that that electability argument goes away. It dissipates like that. If voters see Biden for what he really is, and they've done a great job at keeping him away from the public. Joe Biden didn't even campaign in states that he was able to win. So, I mean, credit to them for knowing at least what they were working with and how to work with him. But still... What this is doing now is a huge gift to Joe Biden, and it's just shameless. And on top of that, they didn't just change the rules to protect Biden. They changed the rules to screw over, over other candidates, much like they did before. Because as J. Edward Moreno of The Hill reports, the Democratic National Committee on Friday announced new qualifying standards for the upcoming Arizona debate that will leave only the top two contenders on stage. Representative Tulsi Gabbard did not meet the single qualifying factor, earning at least 20% of the delegates awarded as of March 15th. Senator Bernie Sanders and former Vice President Joe Biden are the only candidates who have qualified for the debate, which will be hosted by CNN and and Univision on March 15th in Phoenix. So the rules previously were that you just needed a delegate, a single delegate, and you'd qualify. But now that Tulsi Gabbard qualifies almost immediately, the DNC spokesperson says, well, we're going to change that. Like the night of, the night Tulsi Gabbard won a, del a delegate, the DNC said, we're probably going to change those rules, so don't get too excited. How brazen and shameless is that? And look, I'll just say, Tulsi Gabbard is not going to win, and truly, I have no idea what she's doing. The fact that she hasn't dropped out and endorsed Bernie Sanders yet, it just makes no sense to me, because she's just a couple years older than me. So she has a long career ahead of her. She can run again in 2024 or 2028, but right now, this is not her time. She's not going to win. She's not going to win, and she claims to be anti-war, and the best chance we get at getting an anti-war candidate, even if she thinks she's better... It's to drop out and endorse Bernie Sanders. However, with that being said, that's not what she's choosing to do. And the fact that the rules are being changed specifically to fuck her over is unethical. It doesn't matter that I disagree with Tulsi Gabbard staying in the race. That's irrelevant. What matters is that the DNC follow their own rules going forward because, look, even if you don't support Tulsi Gabbard and you disagree that, you know, they shouldn't have changed the rules, in the future, a candidate that you're supporting can just as easily be fucked over. I mean, it happened to Lawrence Lessig in 2016. It happened to Mike Ravel, where he qualified for the debate after there was this huge push, and uh, Marianne Williamson tried to help with that as well, and then they just didn't let him get on the stage. And then uh, Mike Bloomberg, all of a sudden, they changed the rules to benefit him to get him on the debate, which was a disaster. But I mean, he bought the DNC. He, he gave them $300,000. And now Tulsi Gabbard qualifies, but all of a sudden they say, you know what, we're changing the rules. So it honestly, just saying Tulsi Gabbard isn't going to win, I think that's common sense. I think she knows she's not going to win, but that doesn't matter. The fact remains that she's in the race and she qualified and they changed the rules. That's so 
brazen and shamelessly unethical that it doesn't matter who you support. If I saw the Republicans doing this to a candidate, I would think that that was unethical. So it doesn't matter that they're doing this to a candidate that I'm not currently supporting and who I think should probably drop out and endorse Bernie Sanders. But what matters is that they're before our very eyes, just changing the rules on a whim. They're just making up the rules as they go along. And that should bother everyone. That should be disturbing to people. That should make people understand what we're up against. A corrupt organization that is using all of their institutional advantages to fuck over candidates that they don't like and using their advantages to boost candidates that they would like to help. So the DNC is just rotten to the core and this organization isn't concerned with winning. This organization is specifically functioning now to protect the status quo and if people don't see that by now they're never going to see it so if you are of the belief and i don't know how many people believe this that the dnc isn't a horrible institution and they're not corrupt and rotten to the core then you will see that one day it's inevitable because there's going to be a time where you're supporting a candidate and the dnc fucks them over and then you're going to see but then it's going to be too late so what we've got to do is be consistent and we have to hold the DNC accountable. If they create rules, they need to follow those rules. This isn't a difficult decision. It's just a matter of fairness. If Tom Perez says we're going to have five debates, then he needs to make sure that there are five debates. If Tom Perez says this is the criteria that you need to meet in order to qualify and you meet that criteria, they don't get to change it after a candidate that they don't like meets those rules. It's just a matter of being fair and consistent. And the fact that we can't even get the bare minimum from this disgusting organization, it just shows that the Democratic Party, the establishment, it's just, it, it's too far gone. There's no redemption. They're not going to have a change of heart. The only way to make them change is to beat them and change the makeup the people who are in charge currently. And that can't happen unless we get a nomination of Bernie Sanders because he can take control of the party apparatus and actually change the makeup. So if we're concerned with fairness, we need to fight like hell to make sure that Bernie Sanders is the nominee because this will continue to happen so long as ghouls like Tom Perez are in charge of the DNC. Beta male.